John Sattimore's Feast is a novel set in the 17th century in the West Country of England, and it tells the story of an orphan who becomes the greatest chef of his age. Unfortunately, he falls in love with the wrong girl, which is to say, the girl upstairs. And doubly unfortunately, the English Civil War breaks out. The inspiration for the novel was the, the history of English cooking, um, which I discovered was not uh, red-faced men stirring vast pots of stew, but was eclectic and cosmopolitan. Um, until, of course, the English Civil War broke out, when all that was swept away. And I thought to myself, what if you were a cook? What if you grew up and were apprenticed in a place like this? If you worked here, you sweated your way up to the top, and then suddenly the world that you were brought up to serve disappeared. What would you do? How would you cope? That was the beginning of the novel, and I worked backwards and forwards from that point. We're standing in, in Ham House, which was built in 1610 for a courtier of James I and VI of Scotland. Um, and this is one of the only, or I believe the only, surviving 17th century kitchens. So this is where John Satinall would have worked and grown up. And we're surrounded by the, the original equipment. This is an original 17th century table. The original benches are over there, and some of the original equipment that he would have used. Of course, that equipment is, would have been very different. Um, sieves, for instance, were made of horse hair at the time. A whisk was a bunch of birch twigs. Everything was done by hand. Bread was baked three times a day. And there were three different types of it as well, of course, corresponding to the three different orders of the household, the lowest laborers, the servants, and the people upstairs. This was a, a cuisine which was much more sophisticated than anyone would have expected. I remember in particular um, Eleanor Fetter Place's uh, re recipe for making sugar syrup, which began with um, a loaf of sugar which you ground down into a powder. You then um, inserted the powder through a goose quill into an inflated, washed out pig's bladder and then suspended it over a bath of simmering water for 24 hours and that way you got your sugar syrup. Uh, that's the first ingredient of the recipe, and it gets more complex from there. So this was an extremely difficult cuisine to cook. It was very, took a great deal of skill, and of course it took even more skill because everyone was crammed in together into a space like this. So this kitchen would have served 70 people a day. It would have been incredibly hot, incredibly cramped. This was John Satinall's world. He, he not only worked here, he, he lived here and slept here as well and um, his whole life was lived down here, um, serving the people who were upstairs. Now, there was no reason for him ever to go upstairs, and there would have been no reason for the people that he served to come down here either. In order to prosecute his affair with Lucretia, he had to bridge those two worlds. He had to jump from one to the other. Mm -hmm.